So I have my images copyrighted and keyword, and now I want to do some sorting. So I want to go through these 20 images, and I want to pick out the images that, well, the images that I think that I like or I will use um, more. So I'm going to select my first image, and I'm going to go into the loop mode, which is this icon right down here that you can click on, or you can hit E. G will take you back to the grid mode, which is this icon right here. E will take you to the loop mode. I like to work in loop mode. And personally, one other thing that I like to do when I'm sorting through my images is I like to change this gray background to black. I really just want my images to show up and I don't want to worry about anything else. And so if I click anywhere on this gray background while holding down the option key, or sorry, right click on that background, then I can choose um, black, I could just choose a darker gray if you don't quite like black. Um, I just don't like to have white around it. I like to have black so I can really see sort of my image pop out. Um, so I can choose my first image down here on my film strip. And now what I can do is I can use, um, I can use my keyboard really to do all my rating, but I'm going to show you what I'm doing first off. If I go up to photo here, and I come down um, about two thirds of the way, there's three settings here that I can do, which is to set my flag, set my rating, or set my color label. So the flag we would really use as like, if we, our final picks is how I use it. Now you can come up with your own method or style of, of how you use your flags, your ratings, and your color codes. But I'm going to show you one way that I work and, and just to kind of give you an idea of a way that you can do it. And so you can see the flag has three statuses, flagged, unflagged, and rejected. And so you can use rejected, short keyboard shortcut X, for those images that you just don't, you're not going to use no matter what. Blinks, out of focus, uh, wrong exposures, any of that kind of stuff you could just reject right off the bat unflagged are it's the normal state sort of the default state that they would be in is is normal flat or unflagged and then flagged will put sort of a little flag up on your image let me show you in grid mode when we look at our image in grid mode you can see in this gray border that's around it there's a little flag up here in the corner and i can click on that to flag my image and click on it again to unflag my image down at the bottom, there's these five little dots. That's the star ratings. I can click on that for, for one star, two stars, three stars, four stars, five stars. Or if I click on five stars again, it'll take me back to zero stars. If I clicked on two, I can click two again. It'll take me back to zero stars. So my ratings show up there as well. And then there's my color ratings. I can click on this little rectangle in the lower right corner and it'll give me red, yellow, green, blue, purple, or none for my color ratings. And you can see that those are all available up here as well. That we have this, um, all of these settings that are kind of happening up here too. The other thing that you'll notice when you look at these settings here is that the ratings say none and the keyboard shortcut is zero, just the zero key. One is one, two stars is two, three stars is three, four, five, or we can increase and decrease with the um, hard bracket keys, which are the two bracket keys kind of over the return key. And when we look at the color ratings, you can see that red is six, yellow is seven, green is eight, and blue is nine. So we can add all except for purple with keyboard shortcuts as well. And with the flag, we have P, and you can think of it this way as the flag would be your pick, right? And so P would be for pick and then U for unflag and X for reject. So we can use these keyboard shortcuts to very efficiently do our ratings. So like I said, I like to go into loop mode or E on my keyboard. And now I'll look at my images and what I do is I will initially go through and I will star any image with one star that I think I may want to come back to. Like if it, if it, even remotely interests me, then I'll give it one star so that, so that I can kind of do my first rough edit. So on your first assignment, you're going to be shooting a lot of pairs of images, images that pair up. And 
you're going to have to sort them down into your favorite 10 pairs or 20 images. And this is a great way to do it really fast. So what I'm going to do with these 20 images is I'm going to say that I want to boil it down to five images. And so what I'm going to first do is I am just, I haven't really looked at these images, so I'm just going to go through and look at them. But as I look at them, if it interests me, I'm going to give it one star. I'm not going to think of how many I'm, I'm marking. I'm just going to mark it. So this one, mm, I thought it was kind of nice when I took it, but not as much now. Um, same with that one. I love this tree, so I'm going to tag that. I love how that one turned out. Um, this one maybe has some potential, so I'll tag it. Um, love the shadows on that one. Not so much that one. Not a big fan of that either. Uh, I love the light that's happening on that, so I'll tag it. Um, there's some fun stuff that's here. I like the shapes and the forms. Not so thrilled with that. And then I have these two of the Berlin Wall, and so I'm going to go with that one. I think that one's a little bit more interesting. Uh, the silhouette of the two people sitting there, it maybe interests me, so I'll tag that as well. Um, I kind of like that tree, but yeah, I'll tag it. And then that one I'll tag as well. Okay, so I just went through quickly, relatively quickly. I mean, it took me a little longer because I was vocalizing what I was doing. And, and I tagged those images. Now I can go back to my grid mode and I can come up here to my attributes and I can say one star. And now you can see that it sorts it down to my one star and higher. I can also do that right down here in my custom filter. And you'll notice that my film strip at the bottom now tells me as well. And what I did is I created 10 out of my 20 photos. So I, I knocked the number of photos in half, but I didn't quite get to the five that I was looking for. So now what I'll do is I'll go back to my first image and I'll go back into my loop mode. Um, I can click on the icon here or I can hit the E key. And now that I've looked at these photos, I have sort of a better understanding or a better feeling of the entirety of the catalog of photos. And so now I'll come back to my one stars and I'll go through them again. And if they really do still pique my interest after looking at all the photos, then I will elevate them to a two star. And I'll just keep doing this to three stars, four stars, and five stars until I get down to the number of images that I really want. So I'm going to go through this and I'm going to say, I do like this tree, but I think I like this tree better. So I'm going to make that a two star. Sorry, I hit three. Um, this has some potential, but I think there were other things that looked better. So I'm going to skip it. That one I still like. That one I still like. Um, I think I'm going to stick with that one. Uh, not so much a fan of the Berlin Wall now that I've looked at it and those of that one and that one either. And that one I'll kind of select as well. So now I've just gone through and done a second edit. I'm going to come down to my filter mode down here and I'm going to click on two stars. And there's my five images. So in just two edits that didn't take very long to do, I have reduced those 20 images down to five. And now let's say that I'm working on these five images and I'm just not happy with the five that I picked. I can just refilter it to the one star and then go back through and maybe take a two star off and put a new two star on. It kind of gives me the ability to go back in steps and kind of see the differences that I've chosen and, and how I've, how I've narrowed these down. And so that's just the star ratings. Now let's say that within those star ratings, you wanted to kind of, dig just a little bit further, then we could start using the color ratings. And with the color ratings, we have some view options. And what happens is when we select it, it's going to highlight either just around the image or we can set up the view options to have it show us um, more of what we want to see. And so when I right click on here, uh, it brings up this this sort of uh, uh, contextual menu that allows me to sort of come in and maybe make some changes to see things a little bit different or or uh, deal with my image a little bit different. And what I'm going to go down to is the bottom down here, which says view options. Then we're going to take a, a quick look at some of the view options that we have. So you can see that 
right now we are looking at the grid extras. When I turn off the grid extras, all that stuff around the images goes away. But when I turn it on, it shows me the, the frame numbers. It shows me my ratings. It shows me my, my color markings. Um, so we can choose here to tint the grid cells. Um, we can make everything clickable on there. We can show the info tool tips, which means if I roll over something and pause, it will show me what that tool will do. Um, we can change how much or how dark that tint gets. Uh, the 20% is usually just fine. We can change our, our cell icons, flags, thumbnail badges, um, quick collection markers, any of that kind of stuff we can have it show or hide. We can, um, uh, when it's compact cells, we can have it show different uh, information on that as well. Our index number, that's the number in the upper left corner. Um, our rotation, which are these little arrows. We can't see them right now because we're not in the image, but there's rotation arrows on there. And then there's the bottom label, um, which is our rating and our labeling. We can add a top label to it, like the copy name or the file base name or you can change that to be something else. Um, I tend to not want that information up there. I am happy knowing what number it is along in my grid and having my ratings, my color uh, uh, tags, and my flag up there at the top. You can show um, header label in the expanded cells. You can show the rating footer. There's just all of these changes. And then in loop view, and you can see when we change over to the loop view, um, it changes to the loop view to, to preview what it's going to do. We can show an overlay, which will put the file name up there and the date and the time. Um, or we can change it to info number two, which would be the file name, the exposure, and the lens setting. Uh, I'm usually just wanting to look at my images as a whole in there, and so I don't really put any, any of that info overlay on there. Um, and then the default stuff down here is just fine for showing all that other information. So that's a way to kind of customize your settings that you can see everything uh, in your um, grid mode and loop mode. And so that's rating our files. And you can see you can rate the files or sort the files up here as well. Um, but everything is sort of available right here on the file or in the photo menu. Um, let me show you with flags. If I click on the flag up there, it will flag that image. If I select another image and I hit the P key, it will also um, flag as a pick. If I hit the U key, it will take the flag off, and you can see that it shows that keyboard. And if I hit the X key, it'll set it as rejected, which puts a flag with a little X in it. I'm going to unflag that one for right now, and I'm going to unflag that one as well. And so there's a way to kind of sort all of your images, and you can do that kind of quickly.